receiving some uh, counseling. What's the latest with her too? Well, that's true. She's, she's been with us uh, since yesterday, uh, rightly put, going through some psychological counseling after she had visited the doctors with the medical for. Uh, we are trying very hard to make her understand the need for her to uh, move on and go through the session. And then hopefully when the report is out from the hospital, we'll get to know exactly what we need to do for her medically uh, after that. But for now, yes, she is with us going to some counseling session. All right, just, just a quick one here. We know that uh, three of the suspects who've been arrested, you, you said earlier that they were junior high school uh, students, two of them, and one was in senior high school. Uh, this young lady we are talking about, is she... Uh, also within that same uh, range in terms of education? Is she also a junior high school student? Well, I didn't mention yesterday that uh, this is somebody, this is a victim who's going through some serious trauma, who is going through serious trauma. And so for us now, the concentration is to make her a uh, bit stable, when I say stable, to make her reading up with us so we could talk to her a bit later. So yes, we have her in our custody, but we haven't spoken to her Yes, we will do that when we've realized or when we've seen that, okay, she's able to respond to our question. So what are these young men who've been picked up, what have they been charged with? They haven't been charged. I mentioned yesterday in my statement that these three young men or these three suspects or students have not been charged yet. I uh, would wait for investigation to be over so we could prefer the appropriate charges mm. against them. Yeah, exactly why I'm asking, just to know if there's been any update today. Uh, but uh, just a quick one. Um, if, if you get onto social media, a lot of people are, are wondering, with this particular case, this young girl didn't make a complaint, did she? She has. She has. She has made a complaint. Okay. And did she make the complaint after the police took over the matter or before you went in to arrest these suspects? Well, she has made a complaint. I think we'd have to leave it there. You do not want to alter investigations and the DMs, whatever is going to come out of this. So let's leave it there. Um, she's not the only person who's made complaints. We have a unit, a unit committee member in that area, Bantama, who's also come up to make a complaint. And so let's work with this for now. Okay, now let, let's talk about those who are circulating this uh, video on social media. We've had time with our number. The police talk about uh, that being a crime and also send out some stern warnings. But really, we haven't seen any action in terms of uh, arrest being made. So how is the police going to, you know, go about this? We always hear you say, don't share the videos, don't circulate it. We're going to come after you. But really, we, we don't see, we don't hear or see anything like that. Well, it's unfortunate you haven't seen or heard anything like that. But even at that, it doesn't make it um, something that's not crime. It still remains criminal. And so we still go on to say that whoever circulates or is in possession of this video and still circulating it, it is just from that act. We will make arrests when we get the opportunity to do that. But I think that it's an acute now thing that we all need to come together. If you know it's a crime and you need to stop it, come on. If it was your sister or if it was yourself, would you have allowed it to go viral like it is going now, mm. apart from it being criminal? So it's something that we all need to come together and do understand that, look, whatever it is that we are doing, if it is done on you first, you would not appreciate it. So let's just stop it, apart mm. from it being criminal. But like I said, yes, the warning has gone out there several times. The fact that we probably haven't arrested anybody doesn't mean that whatever is going on is not criminal. It's just against the... Uh, the crimes of the country. So it is something that we should solve. Well, finally, before you go, uh, some time uh, ago we, we had a very prominent figure in, in this country. Her son was said to have been involved in a sex video. What we saw was that uh, the, the police, or we don't know who did it, but the, the video was blocked at source, so it was very difficult for anybody to share it, even if you had it. Uh, is the police considering doing that with this particular video? Yes. Okay, so, so we expect that even if people have it, they shouldn't be able to share it. That's the expectation. All right, okay. Thank you very much for your time this Thank morning. Uh, hopefully we'll get back to you in the day for some updates on this rather unfortunate incident that occurred in Bantama. And uh, we were just speaking to ASB Juliana Obing, and she is the 
PRO for the Ashanti Regional Police Command. We'll be bringing you more on this, especially visiting the community where this happened. And maybe get your views on social media on this. Uh, we, we've been seeing this time without number, especially this year. Is it time we had a conversation uh, around this and protecting people uh, who are publicly shamed in videos like this? We'll take a quick breather. When I come back, we'll be having more. Please stay. I am Katie G, CEO of Adia De. Welcome to Adia De headquarters, where we make all the organic snacks that you love. The whole concept behind Adia De is that we're getting older. We're not getting younger. So how can we eat sweets, enjoy sweets, and stay healthy? That's where Adia De comes in. So get ready. I'm going to take you through the process and tell you how you can get Adia De for yourself. The Joy Business Van, on TV, radio, online, and on the ground. It's powered by Joy Business and supported by EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank. Thanks for staying on the AM show with me, Benis Abubedu. Shortly, I must mention that we'll be taking you to Parliament. Roland Walker uh, is standing by. He'll be having a conversation with uh, Neil Ante Van der Poel, MP for Ododo Diodo, on, you know, the year in review, basically talking about governance and some pe personal issues as well. But let's stay on this issue, uh, this video that's gone viral of a young girl being held down on the mattress about four young boys taking turns to sexually assault her. We just spoke to the police. They tell us they are still on a manhunt for four others after picking up three suspects. But now let's get the legal perspective of this and speak to uh, Martin. He's a lawyer, and hopefully we'll c we can answer some uh, legal questions lingering on our minds. Hello, sir. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Benny. Great to have you. So I, I just got off the phone. I uh, was speaking to the PRO of... Uh, the Ashanti Regional Police Command, uh, Julian Albing, and she, she was talking about uh, the fact that sharing this video is a crime. But my question was, we've had this time without number. We haven't seen anybody take action against somebody who sh shared a video like this. What do you think we can do as a country to let people really understand that, look, you can't do this and get away with it? Okay. Uh, basically, I think we should publicize those uh, persons uh, or the cases in which uh, some people have been convicted for sharing uh, such videos. On the top of my head, I can remember at least three cases. So there, is, uh, some, there are some cases that we can go back into the archives and bring back them. Maybe you can uh, talk about them from time to time. So in essence, I'm saying that there have been some prosecution, but uh, it doesn't appear that those uh, cases attracted much uh, or got much traction after the conviction. Mm. So that's the best way to go look for those cases. Maybe we can help. Uh, we can make inquiries and get copies of those judgments. Then maybe we can have a program of that. And from time to time, you may receive. And also, you can invite other persons on this subject. Mm. Yes. All right. Thank you very much uh, for that. Hopefully, we, we would have a program uh, on it, like you're saying. Uh, but, but let's talk about these young men involved. We hear from the police that at least the three who've been picked up are uh, in the junior high school. We don't know their ages yet, but let's just say they are minors, they are below 18. How would this case uh, be treated in the legal perspective? Okay, so once they are below 18, the law is very soft on them because, you know, children generally... Uh, are more prone to indiscretion. You say, yes, that's the way the law is passed, knowing that, you know, we've all been children before, so sometimes you would see that when you look back to a things that you say that the child that today, you wouldn't dare to. So for the, those who are below 18, under the law, uh, if they were con if they are convicted, the maximum sentence would be three years. But if a person is to maximum, so meaning anything from 
one day in custody up to three years, not more. It can't be more than three years uh, in, in detention. Mm -hmm. Then, for those who are back uh for rape, the minimum sentence, minimum that a person would get is five years, and the maximum is 25. So, yes, a guy can give four years if a uh, convict is about 50 years. The minimum will be five years, and the maximum 25. Mm. But in practice, the Supreme Court uh, has given some guidelines that when people are very young like this, it is not good to keep them away, in this case, for 25 years. No, you would have to come to the lower end of the steel so that they can come out and then uh, contribute to society. And also the fact that when he comes out, you know, the stigma. Mm. People seeing him around, yes, mm -hmm. to serve as a warning to like-minded persons. So generally, you, you don't want to break 25 mm. for a very young person. Mm. But lawyer, we, we've had cases where uh, minors were tried as adults, depending on uh, the seriousness of, of the case involved. I, I, I don't know if you've seen this video of you or you've heard a description of what uh, happened in that video. Uh, but do you think this is a case that could take that angle of minors being treated uh, or being tried as adults based on the seriousness of the case? Uh, in our law, uh, what we do is that you, uh, the phrase minors being tried as adults, it has a very restricted meaning. That, that is when, uh, so being tried, he's tried with an adult. If uh, his, uh, a minor is found to have committed a crime or alleged to have committed a crime with an adult, then they are tried together. So let's say in this, uh, let's use a hypothetical example so that this video it doesn't look like we are prejudging in it. Sure. So let's say uh, uh, 16 years old, and then he goes with the uh, who is 19, and then they allegedly uh, rape uh, Amina. Okay? So because they are with 19, and Fiji is 16. Below 18, Fiji should have been taken to the juvenile court. And then that place, there is uh, a lot of, uh, what do you call it, uh, security barriers. It's uh, the trial is done in camera so that we protect the juvenile. But when Fiji is involved in a crime with uh, Yahoo, who is 19, as an adult, the case may go to the circuit court. But in the circuit court, it's in that place now we've uh, developed protocols so that because we see 16, the trials will still be down in camera. So that we need to see the fact that we are with 19 doesn't mean, you know, adulthood is a thing from 18 up to the time you die. So you see that when the person is 19, he still has a lot of uh, childhood tendencies in him. So it's good that our law has to play. So even for the 19 year old, when we go to court, they don't try openly for people to come and see and make a, I mean, uh, have laugh at it. No, mm. it's still done in chambers because we still need to protect them. These are young mm. persons. Mm. You know, we know what happens generally, especially if they, uh, they are, they are alleged the use of force is bad, it's against our uh, laws and the rest. Mm. But you have to be careful that in the process of solving, you don't create more problems and make them harder criminals. Mm. Uh -huh. So that is the concept. Uh, all right. So I, I chanced on a Facebook comment, and I'm sure that that uh, sentiment will be shared by a lot of other people um, in, in the country and on, and on Facebook. Earlier this month, or late last month, I can't really remember, we saw a video of a young girl who was being beaten up by a group of girls. And now we saw this video of this young girl who's allegedly being gang raped by a group of boys. Now for this person on Facebook, it's as though uh, the police service is picking and choosing uh, what, to, what to try without a complaint. I initially, with this gang rape case, we heard that the police saw the video and decided to act. Now we are hearing um, uh, that the victim has filed a complaint. ASP Julian Obin won't tell us uh, in, 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 in which order these two occurred. But for this person on social media, it looks as though as a country we are picking and choosing uh, what to do. We see a video uh, with someone being beaten up and we don't do anything about it. And we see this one with someone being allegedly gang raped and, and we want to do something about it. How do you think we can address some of these issues in, in, in entirety so it doesn't look like we are picking and choosing? 
No, so the first thing is to uh, then contact the police. So let's say that uh, one of you or any of us listeners and viewers, you see, active citizens, any person who has seen that video of Facebook can walk into the police station and make a report. That's the law. It doesn't, you don't have to be a relation of the person being assaulted. Any person, once you say something that in your information, uh, you think that it's a, a crime, you can walk into any police station and lodge a complaint. Okay, then based upon it, they'll pull down the, uh, or get a copy of the video and then begin to investigate. But to make the case uh, move forward, obviously you, would, you should be able to help the police. You know, they are very constrained. You know, Ghana police, they are not that well resourced. And especially when it comes to internet and all those things. So the main thing is that we may have to help the police to identify the victims and the alleged perpetrators. Then the case can move forward. If you ask me on the face of it, it would appear that this uh, alleged gang rape, the reason it's been able to uh, move forward quickly is the fact that the alleged victim and the uh, alleged juvenile were easily found. And the Facebook one, it doesn't appear to me that people have stepped forward to say that, oh, we know this person, he, he lived here or he lived there, that's the uh, alleged perpetrator. So what we can do is to First of all, have a member of the public step forward, go to any police station, learn that complaint. The police must take that statement, and then the investigation begins. It's as simple as that. I mean, commencing it. But the difficulty comes with identifying those persons in the video. But I think one day at a time, maybe if announcements are made on radio and TV, perhaps people who know them can step forward to volunteer information. But when the statement is not made, mm. uh, it doesn't look like a police may uh, uh, act. Mm. And so are you saying that there's no way the police can go ahead uh, to take up a case without a complaint from any member of the public? The police on their own can say, well, we've seen this video. I want to assume that some of these policemen, of course, they, they do have smartphones. They may have seen the video. Do they have to wait for anybody to file a complaint? Is that how it works? No. No, sometimes the police themselves act as complainers. Mm -hmm. When they themselves feel very, I mean, when they, they it's so repulsive for them, okay, if they find they act as very despicable, okay, and Ghanaian, I mean, anything, once the alleged act, um, there's something in the policeman who speaks it. The policeman can lodge a complaint. But you see, when it, what is happening is that because the cases are many, and also the truth is that, we have different categories of offenses. You see, when you beat somebody, uh, it's that assault. Okay, so assault generally is a misdemeanor. The maximum sentence is three years. But in practice, we don't usually even jail people. Okay, but the, the alleged risk, as I mentioned, it's a first degree felony. Okay, so that one, as I mentioned, the minimum that uh, an adult, somebody above 18, would get is five years. You see, so, and then going up to 25. But for the uh, assaults on the internet, the, the Facebook direction, the maximum is three years. So you see that the law has categorized uh, uh, rape as a far more serious offense than mm. assault. Mm. So you see how it can affect the psyche of yeah. the police too. Sure. Yeah. Mm. So, so it looks like because we are constrained, we have to choose uh, in terms of weight which one is stronger than the other. It, 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 that's, that, that's what looks to be the case. But thank you very much for your time, uh, Martin Pibu. He's a private lawyer. And he's been giving us some insight into uh, the legal perspectives on, on this particular video that's gone viral of a girl being allegedly gang raped. He, he's told us, if you have that video, please don't share it because it's a crime. And also, you know, just help us understand stand for these young boys we don't know their ages yet but if they are uh, below 18 what the law says about that and if they're about 18 what the law also says hopefully we'll get you to Bantam and Kumasi where this young girl or this incident is believed to have happened and uh, let you know what's happening what people there also think about this uh, particular unfortunate incident uh, we'll also be taking you live to Parliament Roland Walker standing by Benil and Hivanda Paul please don't go anywhere because we'll be back with more